Last week, I showed you how to make your own proportional cue and custom non-linearities via Wave's Studio Rack's macro facility. And this week, I have decided to take that a step further by attempting to create my own custom Motown EQ plugin with proportional Q spanning plus 8 and minus 8 dB, custom non-linearities, high quality oversampling, auto gain, and all in my own custom GUI. Sound impossible? Sound too complicated? Well, let me introduce you to the Mo City EQ Paul Third Signature Edition. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it, but so fuck. Well, first off, before we discuss the GUI, let me introduce you to one of the best DIY EQ plugins on the market. M Auto Dynamic EQ from Melda, which retails for about £80. Now, this isn't just an EQ plugin that can auto detect and fix frequency clashing. It's also a fully customizable EQ with in depth macros that allows you to fine tune small adjustments. There is also a little brother called M Dynamic EQ, which is actually on sale for £29 just now from Plugin Boutique. It does also have multi parameter options, and I think it might still do what I'm about to show you with M Auto Dynamic EQ. But I can't say for sure, so I would double check that with a quick demo, as if it does the same multi-parameter options, then just f***ing buy it. So, without further ado, let me show you this in better detail via the edit section of the PT. <laughs> so cheesy. The PT Signature Edition, which will take me to my M Auto Dynamic EQ preset. So by clicking on multi-parameters, you can see the 11 main macros I have created, which covers 7 frequencies, saturation, mojo, and output. And if I click on any of these macros, it will take you to a full in-depth edit window where you can select the parameters you want to link to the macro, and then to the right of that, set your fixed minimums and maximums of each parameter. The appearance section is another handy feature as it allows you to name each macro as well as choosing whether it is continuous or stepped, which will make more sense as I show you the most incredible feature of the M Auto Dynamic EQ, well, in my eyes anyway, which is the banks function. The banks function of the multi-parameter section essentially allows you to create banks of macros within your main macro. This is how we managed to get the proportional Q behaviour so incredibly close to Kit's MoQ. We were able to match the proportional Q in dB bank steps until just after the 6 dB mark, which is where my Waves macro starts to differ before matching at the very end. So not only were we able to copy the proportional Q behaviour closer than the Wave Studio Rack macros, we were also able to counter for the small frequency adjustments that occur in the Kit MoQ. You see, Kit's MoQ bands aren't exactly frequency fixed as you boost or cut using the EQ. There are frequency irregularities, which if I recall were similar to UED as well, I would take a guess that this is what Kit spent most of their time modelling, because as you can see, the centre frequencies do alter very slightly with the changing gain. However, as my Waves video showed last week, these frequency changes are still very small and didn't really affect my pink noise null. The only reason we matched it the way we did was genuinely just to be more accurate to the MoQ emulation and... <laughs> just because we could. Now, what's even better about M Auto Dynamic EQ is that it incorporates optional saturation and an analogue mode. The analog mode to me is more akin to what I expect from transformer based harmonics and looks similar to what I had seen in the UAD as its harmonic behaviour is more focused in the lows and can give you that associated heft that we perceive from a lot of analog gear. The saturation gives you a little bit more of a noticeable analog flavour and both are variable by default but we decided to set each to a fixed value that we liked so we got a quicker workflow. We set the saturation up in a way where even when the 12.5 kHz band is cranked and you are going in hot, you don't really get much audible aliasing. If you are gain staging to around minus 18 dBFS and not using the 12.5 kHz band, you will get away with the times one option, but times two oversampling will allow you to use the 12.5 kHz band without chance of audible aliasing. 
And many of you might be asking, I thought you said that kits oversampling caused high-end phase roll-off. And yes, that's true. But when working with Melda, these guys do things right. Because as you can see, you can go up to times 8 oversampling with Melda's high quality oversampling algorithm. And for those asking about EQ cramping, we made the plugin set up like kits where it doesn't EQ cramp by default. And as you can see, realistically, you only need times 2 oversampling to get what many would deem as a more analog style high end. Now, before we go to the final part that involves creating the GUI, let's have a listen to how this plugin actually sounds. Now for the GUI part. To create your own GUI with Melda plugins, you need what's called Melda MXXX. MXXX is a crazy suite that allows you to create your own custom plugins like what we did with M Auto Dynamic EQ, but with various other Melda plugins. Now, there are two options that Melda offers. You can go for the £85 Melda MXXX Core, which basically just gives you the building blocks for creating your own custom plugins. 
No Melder plugins are included in this and it was made just so you can purely pick and choose your own plugins to work, specifically with MXXX. Now the way this works is that you need to install two different licenses, one for single use in the DAW and another for use in MXXX as MXXX won't load the plugin unless it has the correct license. Now, if you are lucky like me and make good YouTube videos for plugins, you may get access to the full MXXX suite, which is the building blocks included in the MXXX core, but also includes all of their effects. Everything. Flangers, phasers, compressors, EQs, filters, delays, reverb, convolution, harmonizers, spectral dynamics, and even amp simulators, you name it. Basically, all of the good stuff that you, that you have to pay for. Now, for that luxury, it will set you back £857, which is a crap ton of money, but with over 70 plus high quality plugins included, as well as the ability to use them to create your own custom plugins as well as custom GUIs. And I also love the fact that they've given you a cheaper option so you can pick and choose the plugins you want to buy to make your own custom plugins. And in terms of making GUIs, it is pretty straightforward. I'll actually leave a link to their own tutorial videos, which I suggest you do watch so you can get a better idea of how to do what you want to do. It's really as simple as going into your edit function, clicking anywhere on your current GUI, going to menu, and then create your own custom GUI. From there, you can start to build your plugin and assign buttons to your macros, pick fonts, and lay everything out the way you want it. Take us, for example. We created macros especially for the saturation, analog function, bypass, and output so we could assign them to a dial or a switch we could use in the plugin. That's the workflow that we personally wanted. And like us, it's just about experimenting with it and learning how it all works. And once you've got all your buttons and your switches and features you want to learn in the plugin, you could then add graphics and play about with colours, etc, etc. And once you're done, Save it as an active preset, and if you save it as a main preset in your DAW, then it's fully recallable. All I will say is just be very careful and remember to always save presets, as the last thing you want to do is go roaming about in your edit window, accidentally make a few changes, and then screw up your plugin and you've not saved it. And there you have it. That is how I made my own Motown inspired EQ with my own custom GUI. Now, this is obviously not going to be for everyone as there will be many out there who have more disposable income than others and would just rather pay for plugins, which is fair enough. To many, this stuff can be very time consuming and some engineers do measure this kind of stuff based on their hourly rate. So it's either going to be too much hassle for you or it's going to be seen as a little investment as I know there are certain plugins that people really like but despise the GUI or ultimately just can't afford to have that plugin that they want. And for all of the This is why this channel is killing the creativity of music. I'm actually trying to think of a way to potentially save you more money in the long run, which could then be further invested into more creative outlets. Personally, I enjoy making my own plugins and recreating what certain plugins do. As it's not only just a hobby, it's a learning experience as I find out more about my tools, how they work, what they do, and what I actually want from them. And if you want to try out the, the Paul Third Signature Mo City EQ, then consider purchasing Melda via the links below and I'll make the presets and files you need to have available on Patreon and for channel members. I already have all of my Mag, Pultec and Motown Kirchhoff presets available for Patreon and channel members, as well as my Waves Motownish Studio Rack preset. So, as always, guys and girls, thanks again for your time, and I will see you again next week.